What's up guys, welcome back to another Dokkan Battle video. So, since the game has been a bit slow over the past couple of days, I decided to go ahead and compile a list of 10 different things that Bandai and Akatsuki can change about Dokkan to make it a much more enjoyable experience or maybe just less painful experience for us, the player base. Now obviously, not everyone's gonna agree with every point I make in this video and that's totally totally fine. In fact, if you guys have your own suggestions about how they can, you know, change the game for the better to make it a better experience for all of us, then definitely let us know in the comments down below. But uh, with that said, let's jump right into it. And the first point we're going to talk about is I think going to be the most popular one. I don't really see anybody disagreeing with me on this one because we're going to be talking about the friend system and just how ridiculously annoying how ridiculously broken it still is even after they improved it in the past i mean the main issue right now is that we can't really run specific teams that are not meta or not popular or just led by you know a certain unit that not a lot of people summon for because he wasn't that hype right i mean seriously it's a huge problem we've all experienced it like how many times have you wanted to run a category team that maybe not a lot of other people are running right now and you just can't find the right friend supporter right like uh, i'm currently looking for a int future gohan and i'm sorted by you know super int and there's just not a single int future gohan on my friends list or in the guest list either and I can refresh this as many times as I want, and he's just not gonna pop up. Yo, by the way, this update button, like, literally does nothing. Like, I think in theory, what it's supposed to do is change the, you know, available options, but it feels like all it's doing is, like, rearranging the characters, right? So, I'm not really sure what's going on with that either, but my point is, they gotta make it easier for us to find specific units to run certain categories. Just make it easier for us to run any you know, team we want, right? And I think the easiest solution to this is actually very simple. And it's something that people who run like private servers, like Hydros, for example, have been doing with their private server for a long time now. There's no reason why Bandai can't do it too. And that would be to just give us a mirror of our current leader for the team we're trying to run. So for example, I'm currently using the Int Future Gohan. I wanna run Bond of Master and Disciple then the game can just generate a 55% Super Attack 10 version of Int Future Gohan for me to choose no matter what. And then maybe if I want to use like a better one, like a, you know, one dupe, two dupe, or rainbow Int Future Gohan, if one of my friends has that, then they can set it and I can use that. But this basically makes it so much easier for people who, you know, want to run those like more obscure teams or less popular teams. Like maybe they're a huge fan of a certain character who has a unique category and they summon for that character but nobody else did, then they can still run the team that that new character leads, right? And I just think it would solve so many problems, so many headaches to do with the uh, friend system. And as I said, it's been something that, you know, private servers have done for a long time. Like, I think the developers at Bandai should be able to implement it into the actual game fairly easily or rather i guess akatsuki should be able to do it with uh, no issues so that's one solution i have to potentially fix this disaster of a friend system the other solution is i think less ideal but would also help a lot and that would be to give people the option to set multiple friend supports maybe like one of each type or just like five of uh, any unit they want so that if i click on this guy for example it'll pop up five different units that he chose as his potential friend leads. And I can choose one of those as, uh, you know, my friend leader to run my team with. And overall, it would just give us more flexibility for team building, for teams we can bring. And even though it's not as good as the first option, it's still much better than our current setup where we can only choose one friend lead. And obviously we can swap it anytime we want. But for the most part, a lot of people just set it and forget it for like a long time right so like yeah those are my two main ideas for how the friend system can be improved um of course i'm sure a lot of you guys have some other ideas too that might be even better but this is just what i've thought of 
and it's been a problem for a very long time. I think this is the number one most complained about topic when it comes to Dokkan, so hopefully they change it sooner than later. I'm sure it'll happen um, at some point down the line with a major update. There is that update Z that's still on the horizon, right? So fingers crossed that they overhaul the friend system in a major way because we really need it, guys. All right, so that is point number one. And now moving on to point number two, categories. And I'm not saying that, you know, we're getting too many categories, even though that is a bit of a problem. And I'm not necessarily saying that some of the categories are, you know, kind of random and weird, which is also true. My main gripe, my main issue with uh, the category system right now is how they're listed, man. Like how they're presented to you. Like they're not in alphabetical order, which just doesn't make a lot of sense to me, okay? And I don't know if this is just like something exclusive to me, maybe I'm stupid, maybe I just need to memorize where every category is on the list, but like this is so annoying guys, there's no real like pattern to it, like I know certain categories that are related to each other, like Super Saiyans, Super Saiyan 2, Super Saiyan 3 are grouped together, Fusion and Patara are always together, which makes sense. Uh, you know, pure Saiyans and hybrid Saiyans are together and all that stuff, which is cool, but I would much prefer it if they just made everything alphabetical order, you know? Because, like, if I'm looking for Fusion, for example, I know that F comes after E, so I can just go to that place on the list and find it immediately. And I cannot tell you how many times, man, it took me like 30 seconds plus to find one category. I'm like, yo, where is full power? Um,. I don't really know. If I knew that it was sorted in alphabetical order, then I would know that it's somewhere close to like the beginning of the list because F is fairly early in the alphabet, right? And uh, I don't know, maybe this one's going to be a little bit more controversial. Maybe more people will disagree with this point. But I personally think that having alphabetical order for these categories here would make our lives as Dokkan players significantly easier. And uh, it just... It just makes sense, you know? So uh, yeah, that's my second point. That's the second change I want to see in the future. Now moving on to number three, the world tournament. Now, <laughs> I know there's a lot of things I could say about the world tournament. Like they probably need to like just overhaul the entire event to really make it enjoyable at this point. But you know, anything short of that, let's just talk about some realistic uh, minor changes that they could literally implement for the next tournament that would still make it a lot more enjoyable Okay, so the first thing is uh, they need to remove the preliminary stages Okay, they really need to do that because there's no reason we have to do four fights on the first round Get the least points and have it take up like literally half the time of each run, right? Like I just don't understand why that's necessary they should just make the preliminary one fight like every single other stage and each run, each round would be significantly shorter, right? So that's one thing they could do like literally tomorrow and it wouldn't take them that much time. Number two, they need to allow us to start at the 30x stage, right? Or the 30x difficulty where you get the most points because realistically that's going to be the difficulty that most people uh, run for the majority of the tournament anyways, so why do you have to make people go through like 2.5x, 3x, 5x, 7, 10, so on and so forth every single time? Like if you were able to unlock 30x, then they should just let us, you know, do that from the start for the next tournament. Like, you know, if you're a newer player and you could only get up to 10x, then maybe they should just cap you or let you start at uh, whichever difficulty you last unlocked for the previous tournament. That's totally fine, I think, but if people were able to do 30x consistently, they should just let us start with 30x instead of wasting our time at the lower levels getting, you know, less uh, points and all that stuff, right? So uh, those are two changes, I think, that are very simple, that are very easy to do, that uh, Bandai can consider. And of course, in the future, like longer term, I do want to see a complete overhaul of the event because it just really, really sucks with the exception of the rewards, which are nice. But that's the only reason I think almost anybody runs the world tournament at this point. 
let's uh, make it a fun event again. You know, like it was pretty cool the first couple of times, but when it's the same thing every time, it's not so fun anymore. But for now, let's just start with the basics. Either get rid of the prelims or make it one fight and then just let us start from the highest possible difficulty or the highest difficulty we uh, last unlocked or maybe add a new difficulty as well like 35x, 40x, 50x, I don't really know, you know, the higher the better, right? So uh, yeah, that's the world tournament right there. Point number four, HD art. And I feel like this one's fairly self-explanatory, right? Like the art in Dokkan is really, really good it's really, really nice, but the quality, at least compared to other gacha games, is trash, man. I mean, the characters are so grainy, it's not even funny. Like, uh, you know, we can, we can really point out any of these guys. Like, this dude right here, you know, his effects look great, the sticker effect looks awesome, but the actual Goku himself is, is very low res, right? It's very low quality, and that applies to basically every single unit in the game, especially LRs. Like, I feel like that's especially unforgivable because LRs are much harder to pull. A lot of people spend a lot of money to pull them. Like, look at these guys, man, the Goku and the Vegeta. I think they look awful. I like their actual, like, design. You know, I like the poses and all that stuff, the shading or whatever, but the actual quality is just, it's just bad. Okay, it's just bad, so they need to give us the option to download HD assets for all of our units, as well as actually the uh, super attack animations too. Like the sprites in the supers, man, sometimes they look very, very rough, right? And I know they have them, okay? Like they don't draw these characters like this. They don't draw them in low quality. They start in high quality, but they downgrade the resolution so that the file's not as big, so the game's not as big, right? But for some people who have that extra space, you know, like let's say for example, you have a newer phone or you just have like an extra SD card with like 100 gigabytes of extra space, we wanna have HD assets, we don't mind the extra download, so like it should be an optional thing just like in uh, Legends, like a, you know, download all kind of thing where if we have to download an extra five to 10 gigabytes of data to have HD assets for our cards, for our animations, we'd be totally okay with that, right? I think uh, most people would be fine. Obviously, if you can't, if your phone is limited in capacity or it's an older phone and you can't handle that, that's okay. That's why it should be optional, right? So uh, yeah, HD Arts, point number four. I mean, I guess when, when it comes to like the gameplay, it doesn't make a huge difference, right? But for the collection aspect, for the enjoyment of like looking at your cards and all that stuff, which is, I think a pretty big aspect of the game. I think having HD assets would, uh, you know, be a big improvement, okay? So yeah, that's point number four. Now moving on to number five, Chain Battle. And just like the World Tournament, the Chain Battle event has a lot of problems. There are a lot of things we could address, but just to keep it simple right now, just to keep it realistic, what they should do is allow people to set only six characters for each team, right? Like the super team and the extreme team. Just let us choose six characters so that each time when you're choosing a supporter team, you can ensure that you have the best available units from that person, right? Because like sometimes, actually most times, because they choose six out of the 10, you end up with a suboptimal um, combination of units. So even though that person might be able to give you the best possible like combination, you almost never get it because it's super random, it's super RNG dependent, right? So if they only let us choose six, then we always get the perfect six, right? The six that that person wants you to use and uh, it'd be much easier to get good scores, get high scores, you know, complete all the missions for up to 100 million points and all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, it would just be less frustrating because we don't have to refresh as much, we don't have to rely on RNG as much. Obviously, there are still other aspects of this event that are RNG dependent, but uh, I just think that this part, you know, the randomizing of the supporter teams is uh, very much not necessary. Oh, one other thing is that each boss should have more effective categories and more advantageous characters to uh, give people more options, right? I mean, at the end of the day, I think a lot of these uh, points I make in this video, you're gonna notice 
come down to giving the players more choice because that's always going to be a positive, you know what I mean? So uh, yeah, that's chain battle, that's point number five. Yo, I just fell to top 2%, I didn't even realize. I was at top 1% the entire week. Yeah, I'll worry about that later, I'll worry about that later. Uh, anyways, that's point five. Point six, the ability to disable super attack animations or at the very least be able to skip them. You know, like uh, when an animation starts, there's a little button at the top right of the screen. You can click on it to skip the animation. Just imagine how much faster that would make grinding medals or the world tournament or whatever, right? Like a prime battle LR, for example, more than half of that maybe like two thirds of that is just literally watching the animations for your units, right? And if we were able to go into the menu and disable super attack animations, at least temporarily, then it might only take like two to three hours to completely farm uh, a new prime battle LR. And maybe that's something that they don't want. Maybe they want that to be built into the game so that it can artificially extend the length of uh, content, right? But I think that's not right. I feel like we should have that option to turn off Super Attack animations, or at least skip them, right? Because like, obviously there are some units where I want to watch the animation over and over again, but for older units especially, like, how many times can I see Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta shoot a water gun, like, in three different angles? <laughs> that's the example I always use, I know, but it's one of the worst animations of the game, let's be honest. And yeah, I think being able to skip animations like that would drastically increase my um, enjoyment of the game, especially when it comes to the grinding. It would make things go by a lot faster, you know, when they're boring. Like, uh, yo, think about World Tournament. How fast would a World Tournament run be if we could skip STR Broly or LR Nappa Vegeta's animation for the attack all and just like have them kill the entire team? in two, three seconds. Like maybe that would be problematic. I'm not really sure, but it's definitely something I wanna see. And as I said, some of these opinions might be a bit controversial to you guys. So if you disagree, definitely let me know because I know I'm not like completely on point with uh, all these points, you know? So uh, yeah, that's point number six. Oh, also, if they don't wanna do that, if they don't want to let us skip it, then maybe give us a faster option like uh, we have times two speed right now give us times three times four maybe even times five that seems like it'd be really crazy it would actually be kind of funny <laughs> but something like that could be a uh, decent compromise all right now moving on to point seven increased capacity for the friend list and this might not be an issue for everyone but for me, it is a huge issue because I want to add as many of my subscribers as possible. I know a lot of you guys have wanted to add me uh, you know, to your friends list for a long time. And it's just unfortunate that I can't because there's only 100 slots on everyone's friends list. I mean, I don't know why there's this like arbitrary limit. Uh, they could easily, I think, increase it to 200, 300, maybe even 500. A uh, thousand? Okay, maybe that's too much. I don't really know. But the point is, it should be more than a hundred. So uh, there's not much more I can say about this. Um, it would actually, you know, help with the friend system issue too, right? Because obviously, more friends means more options uh, to choose from in terms of a friend lead. So yeah, that's point seven. Not much more I can say about that. Give us more friend slots, Bandai. It shouldn't be that hard, right? Now moving on to point eight. I want to see more community driven content or maybe just more engagement with the player base because at the end of the day, we're the ones that are making this game for, we're the ones that keep this game going. So I just think that we should have more input into the kind of events we're getting, the kind of awakenings and all that stuff we're getting, right? Like for example, in the past, they had a legendary election where they gave us a bunch of options for the next LR. We want to see in the game and ultimately LR Vegito Blue won, which obviously I think was the right choice, but there was like Kid Boo on there, there was Super Saiyan 4 Goku on there, um, you know, a bunch of different options. And we could vote for which one we wanted to see become an LR, right? And uh, more recently there was the, um, I think around like New Year's or around Christmas where they let us vote for the next EZA between Biz Vegito Blue 
and AGL Rose, and Vegito Blue won, and then eventually Rose also got an EZA, but Vegito Blue got the EZA first because that's the one that got the most votes on Twitter. And they just should do more stuff like that, you know? Like, they've shown that they're willing to uh, engage the community in some way in the past, so why aren't we seeing this more? Like, why aren't they maybe allowing a vote for, like, every new EZA or, like, you know, once or twice every year, do a vote for the next global first unit or just like unit in general for both sides. You guys know what I mean, right? Like I just want to see more engagement for the community to give us the types of content and the types of units that we want to see. Because once again, we are the ones keeping this game going. You know, they depend on our money to keep the lights on, even though I don't think that's really an issue anymore. But I just feel like we deserve more of a say in uh, what we get in this game. So that's number eight, we got two more. Number nine is, I wanna see a permanent mode in the game with daily or regular missions or objectives for us to clear. And that's mainly to combat the dry spells that this game sometimes has, right? Where there's literally nothing to do if you've cleared all the new story events, you've cleared the new uh, Prime Battle or Extreme Z Battle or whatever, you've just done all the new content that the new celebration has to offer and sometimes, I mean some people might say it's your fault, but sometimes you get it done fairly quickly within the first couple of days and then there's just like a few weeks where you have nothing to do, right? Like the only thing you can do after that is log in to your daily missions, which is like, you know, clear two stages and then call it a day. You're literally in the game for like five to ten minutes and then you're out of things to do, which kind of sucks. So my idea is to have some kind of a mode, maybe like a legendary Goku event or uh, infinite Dragon Ball history style stage. And every single day you have a new objective to clear or a different way you have to clear the event to get your you know rewards, whether it be like one to two stones or a Kai or a few potential orbs, nothing too crazy, but it would just give us something new to work towards, something new to accomplish every day if we've done everything. And this is a huge problem for people who are like me that are literally in the very end game. Like we've done all the super battle road stuff, all the extreme super battle road stuff, every single story event, every single story mission, um, I guess I could farm link levels, but that's not always super fun. So if there was this like permanent mode where we had a new objective every day, like beat it with only, you know, AGL types or STR types or a certain category, or you have this time limit, or you have to bring this uh, one character or whatever it is, right? Like the possibilities are kind of endless, then I think it would keep the game uh, you know, somewhat fun, or at least give me something to do even during these super dry spells like we've been experiencing uh, fairly regularly over the past few weeks, right? So uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think about that idea too. I'm still working on the concept, but I think something like this is definitely very much needed at this point. And uh, point 10 now, the final point, and this is something that Honestly, I don't really see happening ever, but a man can dream. It might be wishful thinking, but crazier things have happened, and I'm just gonna put it out there in case there's a Bandai Spy watching. We wanna see more collaborations in this game, okay? And I know we have some collaborations, but they're all with other Dragon Ball properties, like Dragon Ball Heroes, Dragon Ball Fusions, Dragon Ball Fighters. Uh, we did have one small collaboration a long time ago with um, One Piece, but that wasn't really like a real uh, collaboration either because it's not like we got like a summonable or free to play Luffy or Nami or something like that, right? So we want to see some real collaborations like what a lot of other games do. One big example, of course, is uh, Seven Deadly Sins Grand Cross, but they're not the only one. Tons of other games, tons of other gacha games have done collaborations with other anime or with TV shows, movies, whatever. Like, I don't wait, I don't know if it's real, but I heard there was gonna be a Stranger Things collaboration with Grand Garaz. Like, is that still happening? Was that a rumor? I'm not really sure, but either way, like how sick would it be to summon four Demon Slayer characters or Attack on Titan characters in Dokkan with Dokkan style animations? Um, I don't know, man. I would be super, super stoked for that. I would definitely go pretty hard 
for certain collaborations. If they wanted to do a My Hero Academia collab and release an LR All Might, I would literally spend all my money for that, you know? So I think collaborations are definitely a good way to, uh, you know, engage people more or just like bring in non-fans of your main property to start playing the game too and also just extend the life of the game, right? Because eventually they're gonna run out of like Goku's to release and Vegeta's and you know, just different forms of the same characters. If they started doing collabs, then the game can still go for quite a bit longer because the possibilities or the options for properties to collab with is kinda limitless. So maybe at some point in the future when they get desperate enough, when they start running out of ideas for Dragon Ball stuff, they'll start doing collabs, but once again, I don't think it's something that we will uh, realistically see, but anything is possible. I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed and hope for that day when we see an LR All Might or, you know, like a Dokkan Fest Avatar Aang from The Last Airbender or something like that. You know, once again, the possibilities are endless. I'm gonna hope for that day to come. I don't expect it because I don't want to be disappointed. But uh, that is my last point, guys. Those are 10 different ways that Bandai and Akatsuki can improve Dokkan for the better, make it much more enjoyable for the player base. And uh, yo, if there are any Bandai spies out there, make sure to take some notes. Please implement some of these changes. If you don't like the list, then at the very least, do the friend system one. The first point on the list, just do that one and I'll still be pretty happy but uh, there you go guys that is today's video thank you so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed it um you know once again man let me know in the comments if you guys agree with my point if you have different opinions or other ideas definitely leave them in the comments and uh maybe one of these days a bandai spy will pass by they'll take a look at the comments they'll watch the video and actually decide to uh implement some of these but uh, for now that's all i gotta say uh, thank you so much for watching. As always, if you liked today's video, then make sure to like the damn video. And if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, and you like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button to join the Tiger Squad now. And while you're at it, hit that notification bell too, so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And that's it. I'm out of here. Until next time, hope you guys have a fantastic, fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media, signing out.